Hey guys, this is Came for 15 and I'm back at it with another video for you guys. And we are back, and welcome back Dragon Ball fans, to another Dragon Ball Super chapter review. Like I said, on the last chapter review, was, was which was back in December, um, I'm going to just start doing, you know, the chapter reviews, because, you know, Dragon Ball is one of my favorite, you know, series, anime series as a whole. And really, you know, there's really nothing to really talk about Dragon Ball unless you're talking about the manga, like, respectively. So, um, you know, I'm going to talk here to start talking the manga and stuff like that. So, you know, let, let's really talk about it. And here we go with manga chapter 56. Um, also, a quick update. Um, if you are, like, a fan of My Hero Academia, I have a lot of My Hero Academia content now. Well, prospectively, just season four, some season four episode reviews. And then also later today, I'm going to make my video of the recent My Hero Academia chapter that came out yesterday. And I'm going to make a video on that and upload that to YouTube today as well. As well as, you know, Supergirl, um, too, because that has a lot of things. But um, anyways, we're here to talk about Dragon Ball. Speaking of Dragon Ball, um, I know I've said this dozens of times, but if you have not picked up Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, please pick it up. It is such a great game. I've had a blast playing that game. And, you know, I, I just can't wait to get back to playing it because that game is really good. Um, but anyways, this chapter basically covers over really essentially the Earth's warriors fighting Moro's, you know, convicts and stuff like that. And essentially, and I'm going to be, I'm not going to show any panels. Um, so if you're brand new to my videos when it comes to manga you know, reviews, um, I do not want to show the panels, one, because I don't want to get a copyright strike from, like, Shueisha, and I feel like, you know, they shouldn't be able to give me a copyright strike if I'm just talking about it, so as long as I'm not showing anything, you know, that is. Now, um, if you want to know where to read it, um, you can get the Viz Media app, they release new chap the newest chapters for all, you know, your favorite animes and stuff like that. You know, and you're able to read them for free. Um, you'll need a subscription to read, you know, like, past chapters and stuff like that. But anyways, um, you know, the Earth you know, the Earth is at danger. And for, one of the first scenes we get is that Jocko and the other, you know, Galactic Patrol members, they're all flying and swarming towards Earth and stuff like that. And essentially, they're basically all, you know, working together alongside the tandem of... Masaroshi, Krillin, Yamcha, Chaozu, Tien, um, Piccolo, and Gohan. Um, Jaku actually gets assigned to, you know, be with, you know, the Earthlings, really. So, he's, like, a little upset about that. Um, you know, and stuff like that. You know, he, he's a little upset. He's like, why do I have to stick with these guys? So, anyways, it cuts to, you know, Kami's lookout. And, essentially, you get um, Dende, Mr. Popo. And, um, and, um, the other Namekian from Planet Namek, um, talking, and essentially, um, you know, also Hercule, and, um, Hercule, another Galactic Patrol member, they did, also, I did not see this, actually, because I'm looking at the chapter, um, the Ox King, Chi-Chi, and Oolong are also at, um, you know, are also all at, um, Kami's Lookout, they're just probably there on the side, um, and there's also another Galactic Patrolman, but Boo, again, is sleeping, and he is not getting up, and, like I, like he said, Boo's been asleep since the last battle, um, so, yeah, so, whether Boo will show up later, we'll only find out, um, but other than that, that's really it, so anyways, you know, Dende's talking to, um, the other Namekian, and essentially, he asked the other Namekian, like, okay, what does Moro's ship look like so we know? And basically, um, the other Namekian says, it looks like, essentially, a mothership with small ships around, you know, around it. So, we they do see Moro's ship come down, and they see the, the ship. You would th And I think they're shocked from the aspect of that, where's small ships? And essentially, there are these little holes, the small ships, you know, fly out and essentially go to like the corners of the world and you know because they're flying all around the com commies lookout and they realize that and they realize wait they're 
like landing in different locations around the world. So essentially, these smaller ships are going around the world, attacking other people, getting other ships, and really essentially just trying to steal things because obviously they know Mor Moro's going to suck the planet dry and take all its energy and its life essence. So they're going to try to get all the treasures they can on Earth and then escape with Moro to do more things to the planet. So yeah, that's essentially what they're doing, you know. Um, yeah, that's that's really all they're doing. Um, we do get another Magetta look-alike, you know, um, you know, creature from you know Universe Seven. You know, another um, I forgot Met Metal Man um, from this universe. So there is another. So I guess. I was like, because there was one before, I think it's the same one, but there's another cameo to Universe 6, um, Magetta, um, if you hadn't seen it bef if you hadn't realized that before, um, it's still pretty cool to see that there's still homages to past arcs, whether it's from the anime or, you know, from the anime, you know, direction from the super, even the manga when the, it first started out, um, it's cool to still see that stuff, but anyways, um, you know, Gohan and Piccolo realize that, and essentially, basically, you know, they all split up. Um, some galactic patrolmen find their ships with um, Krillin and Master Roshi. Another one fly, another group flies with Tien and Chaozu, and then the last batch flies with Yamcha um, to take down the villains from around the corners of the earth. So they give them things to do, you know, and stuff like that. Will they cut back to it? No, probably not much. We'll probably come back to them beating them up, and I'll get to that in a moment. But, um, like I said, they essentially all fly out. Um, and when Krillin, you know, when Krillin and Master Roshi, you know, find some convicts, Krillin runs into the, the panda-looking fusion of Mickey Mouse thing, you know, you saw the last time they came to Earth, and they basically have a little duel again. And essentially, Krillin's like, I haven't been, you know, I'm not the same person as before. And another thing, I just gotta say this, you know, with all the crazy, like, you know, power-ups the, you know, Saiyans get, you would think, aren't the Earthlings, like, one, the only, you know, the only few that ever used that, that did not use the hyperbolic time chamber, I think that would actually help them a lot, personally, um, I think they should use the hyperbolic time chamber, um, two, why don't they just go to, like, some of these places and get power-up boosts? Like, you know, no, no, go to the Supreme Kai's place and get, like, you know, the untapped potential boost from, you know, um, from, um, Elder Kai. Never realized that. I'm like, you know, it's like, it could, you know, like, if you just, then, like, they don't have to be, like, super strong, but if you give them powers where they're at least, you know, good to use, it's like, you know, I'm like, I know they're still respectable and stuff like that, but let's be real, like, there's a huge gap between, you know, certain things, like, I guess you can, I can compare, like, you know, One Piece to certain things, like, Jesus, and One Piece, I know some characters, there's, like, a huge gap between, like, you know, Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, and the other Straw Hats, but, like, at least some of the other Straw Hats can at least hold their own after a while, but then again, it is what it is, but anyways, they do, they, they're, there's, they start their fight, Krillin and the Mickey Mouse panda fusion thing look, um, you know, um, start their fight, um, in the background, these, there's three chicks, essentially, Master Roshi takes note of them, the three chi the, the one panda looking guy tells him to essentially go on, um, and basically go wreck some more havoc and stuff like that, and then, basically, you know, Krillin's thinking of teaming up with Master Roshi. He's like, you know, Master Roshi, I'll get this guy, and then, you know, let's rush him together, essentially. Master Roshi's like, look, buddy, you can't depend on your master for this much. And I feel like it's honestly a repeated, repeat, repeated, you know, stance. Like, he really says that. I'm like, well, then, if you're saying that, Master Roshi, why are you here helping us now? <laughs> you know, we're kind of relying on you right now. Um, but, um... You know, he basically essentially says that you can't go on relying on his old master forever and stuff like that. And essentially, he goes on to chase, you know, those three chicks. And whether that battle they cut to him having a difficulty stopping those three chicks or like the Tournament of Power, he doesn't have no problem dealing with women. That's fine by me. Um, and essentially, they go at it. Krillin gets 
like literally like socked by a punch on this guy and then they continue their fight um so it cuts back to gohan and piccolo and you know that same i don't know spiky haired dude alien he comes down and it looks like he came alone but we only get to only reveal that basically seven three you know showed up in like he showed up to the field but he was invisible and he basically takes you know gohan and piccolo's you know their fighting pe- powers and essentially now he can copy what they do best and jacko was like how could you fall for that again i'm like wait how could you fall for that the dudes were little literally invisible and then one he's an android so you can't sense no energy from this guy of course they would fall of course they would get caught you're telling me see it's like if android 17 and 18 went invisible you couldn't pick up where they were at yeah, but essentially the dude said, you know, he got that from an invisible race. But, um, so the fight between, um, 7-3 and Gohan versus Piccolo start out. And he starts off with using a special beam cannon. Um, again, he really, 7-3, looks like a, honestly, an homage of a fusion between Hidden Cell. The reason why I'm saying Cell is because he can cop he has other people's abilities when he copies them. And then Hit because he looks like Hit. To an extent, it, he, well, he looks like Hit with spikes and, you know, three, like, dots on his head. Um, but essentially, the fight starts between go those three. And, you know, it looks like it's going to, the um, you know, the special beam cannon's going to hit him. But Gohan comes out of nowhere. He creates this, like, huge energy shield and stuff like that. And I'm like, whoa, that's a very good technique. And in the back, Piccolo's charging up. His special beam cannon. Um, you know, it, it's really dope how he does the shield. And it's like, if I ever created my own, you know, custom made Dragon Ball manga, I always thought of like, you know what? Having like a shield or something like that would be dope. You know, an energy type shield. So, you know, like your energy blades, you got your energy blades now, now you got energy shields. You know, and you would think that'd be like used in Dragon Ball from the time being. So essentially, Gohan actually, like, can, you know, revert and throw the shield. He throws it right back at 7-3. Um, and then, basically, Piccolo does, you know, the special beam cannon. Uh, does the special beam cannon right back at him. And essentially pushes the shield to hit, you know, 7-3. And essentially, almost like Cell, you know, back in the se- back in the um, Android Saga, um... You know, the attack hits 7-3, but cuts, like, half of his body off. Well, really, is half of his arm, his torso off. And, you know, they're like, oh, good, good. I'm like, okay, shouldn't you guys, like, destroy this? Um, Another interesting thing, I guess the special beam cannon went so far that all the other warriors who were fighting saw the special beam cannon, you know, fly off into the distance. Essentially because, and then, anyways, cutting back to the fight, um, 7-3... Since he has Piccolo's powers, he is able to regenerate. So he regenerates his lost arm. Um, so, and we all know that basically drains energy. And essentially, you know, which was a good strategy by, you know, Piccolo and Gohan is they realized, you know, fighting this guy, like, as one, as a single person, you know, fighting this person just by ourselves, that is difficult. But if we team up, um, it doesn't matter what abilities he copies because we can just outdo whatever he does with more power, essentially. Um, so, you know, so essentially, yeah. Then he goes to using Gohan's move and basically uses a barrage of blast. And essentially, Piccolo fires off a bl- barrage of blast. And Gohan is actually stepping on the key blast and basically dodging from one from all of Piccolo's key blast to get to 7-3. And I'm like, okay, that was a cool, those were cool shots. Those were cool shots. And he's basically vanishing off the key blast and he hits 7-3 and essentially knocks him down into the water. Um, 7-3 is getting pit, pissed and Gohan makes a mention. He's like, I'm not going to lose to this copycat and he'll never lose because essentially, you know, like I said, 7-3 is essentially, you know, he has the design of hit. But he has like he has he has the same exact powers of cell. It's just 
if Cell had constantly used, you know, the Z Warriors attacks, you know, back to back. Um, anyways, it cuts to you know, Yamcha, and he beat the living stuffing out of the other convicts, which, like I said, goes to show. Which, like I said, they're probably going to pan to the other Earthlings and see what they do. And, essentially, they're going to show them beating him up. It is good to see Yamcha fighting in this. Um, or, it is good to see Yamcha, well, like, fighting again. And, like, you know, he's not as strong as he was. But, you know, the fact that he is somebody you can call and be like, Hey, can you take care of these weaker people? Okay. You know, I like that. I like the fact that now... I do like the fact, I will say this, that Toriyama, he's actually, you know, ever since the Tournament of Power happened, he's starting to use the other side characters than just, you know, straight up Goku and Vegeta. Um, yes, we know Goku and Vegeta are like the strongest, you know, characters in the show. Um, but, you know, at least use like the other characters. Yes, they're not in Goku and Vegeta's tier, but I like the fact that the other characters are being used, and even though it's... You know the weaker characters they go up against um it is still cool to see because you know for the longest time for literally like from battle of gods really on they got little shine but really it was just the goku vegeta show and i like the fact that they're actually using some of people's favorite characters you know they may not be in like epic fights like as they used to be but um it's still good to see them fight and assist goku and vegeta whenever they're not there um Essentially, the Galactic Patrolmen um, round up those criminals, and then Yamcha and the other in the Galactic Patrol ship fly off to go fight other people. Um, so it cuts back to the um, it cu it cuts back to the fight between Seven Three and Piccolo, um, and basically they're just dominating this guy. They're just dominating this dude. Like literally, this dude's doing nothing. They fire a Masenko and another special beam cannon at Seven Three, and essentially. The dude's messed up. He loses. He, he's got like a lost arm. I think he lost a limb on his freaking around his leg. And essentially, go on and pick a little talk about talk. And they're basically saying, "Look, we need to finish this guy fast before he starts using Moro's powers again." Because if you remember from the last time they fought him, he used Moro's power on them and drained their energy. So essentially, the little spiky haired dude is like, "Yo, seven three, use Moro's power. I don't care. This is that's." He's like, we're gonna be dead anyways if you don't use it. So he switch so he switches over to Moro's power and he tries to steal their energy. You know, they're standing on the cliff. And it looks like Piccolo and Go on are standing on the cliff, but then they go on and attack 7-3 and hit 7-3. And it's later revealed to be Android 17 and 18. And that's good to see them. And another positive. Um on, you know, Tori Taro. I know he's the one who's writing the manga and stuff like that. I think he does have a little influence from Toriyama, I believe. Um, but, um... I do like the fact that they're using all these characters we've seen... Really from the Tournament of Power, essentially. Um, the only really other fighters we're missing out on this fight is, like I said, Boo and Goten and Trunks. Now, they do make a mention of Goten and Trunks in this chapter and saying that they're off defending, you know, protecting um 17's island again with the animals. Um so I'm sorry for Goten and Trunks fans, you don't get to see them participate in the fight. And I guess my only last thing is to talk a little bit about Goten and Trunks. I'm like, it kinda really is disappointing to see where they take they take in their characters. One for Trunks, he's the firstborn of Vegeta. You'd think he'd be in the action much more. And then, you know, Goten is literally a look like of Goku. Um, you know, these guys look so promising, you know, during the Boo Saga, and even what they could have done after the Boo Saga, um, you know, when, when Super ultimately decided to come back, and it's like, well, we're gonna, we might get Teen Trunks and Goten, they still look like kids and stuff like that, and it's, it's, you know, I would say this, I'm like, it is sad to see that they don't get, you know, we don't get to see much, you know, Goten, Trunks, and Gotenks action, you know, like we used to, and some people, like, I know one of my friends, you know, one of his favorite characters, um, he was Gotenks, um, you know, it's, it's kind of sad to see, because it's like, well, they could hold their own, you know, you could put them against a weaker criminals, yes, they won't take things too serious, and I think that's the reason why, they want to take him seriously, and they just be goofing off, but, in like, they could be valuable fighting assets, um, you know, 
you when you have Gohan fighting literally the Saiyans and Frieza at you know age four, you know these guys are no like ten almost like really they should be teenagers so they should be like fourteen or fifteen at this point in time, um, no fighting and it's like I wish we could get more Goten and Trunks action, um, you know there. Uh, some people, and that's why some people have kind of stopped deciding to like them because they're just really, you know, one people feel like one they're just not aging like they should be aging. So obviously, you know, they're not filling in the time gaps. But it is what it is. But anyways, anyways, that's just my little tangent going off about Goten and Trunks not showing up in this chapter, which I thought they should have to at least help a bit. They could have had more fighters. I'm sure 17's Island would be safe in the time they, you know, defeat Morrow. Um, but anyways, you know, every team makes a mention that the only reason why they're here to assist because Boma essentially said, if you don't help out, you are, or Boma really said, if you help out, I'll give you guys each 10 million zenny, zenny. So that's why they're here and they realize, and then, you know, Jaku also points out that, um, because they're androids and they don't have no energy. They can't really be affected by, you know, Moro's powers that 7-3 uses, or even Moro himself. So the answer to the to everybody's question on how would the androids do against, like, say, Moro? Well, they'd be pretty fine off against fighting Moro because one, you know, be, be, like, be like one, they can't, they don't have, they have unlimited energy, and they're androids, so you can't zap their energy. So. Yeah, so obviously I could I can see them fighting Zo I'm not Zoro. Um I can see them see them fighting Moro. Um trying to team up against Moro, but I think at the end of the day Moro will be too much for them to handle. Um if anything, we can get another Vegeta, Goku, and Seventeen team up like we saw in the Tournament of Power. Um we could see that, where those three team up to defeat Moro. Um because seventeen I guess at this point in time, next to Gohan, I would say him and Gohan, like on contending status, they're like the third strongest people. On um, they're, they're like it's like back and forth between who's the strongest on Earth, who's the third strongest on Earth. It's between him and Gohan, Android Seventeen and Gohan. But yeah, anyways, like they said, they mentioned that Boma Pay is gonna pay them, you know, ten million zenny, and Android Eighteen, like always, mentions she don't fight for free. I'm like, <coughs> and I'm like. You don't fight for free. So what happens if they go and attack your dang... Go on and, and attack Marin? Um, you clearly would not have to be fighting for free then. I'm like, I don't know that. I don't, I'm like, I, I know that's Android's 18's character. Um, but I just find it funny. It's like, well, you don't fight for free. Okay, so then why do you, like, have one... Well, of course, she should have her husband fight. But um, what if they attack your daughter? You're going to just be like, eh, whatever. Of course not. I'm just saying, it's like, fighting for free, I'm like, what a, okay, okay. But anyways, um, it shows Moro from his mothership, and essentially he's like, he's disappointed in the la in his lackeys essentially not getting the job done. And he's like, these guys are really getting their butts can't hand it to them. But then again, he's like, or I think one of his side comrades, side, side comrades asked if he's going down, if he's going to go land on the planet and start fighting. And he's like, no, I think I'll kind of wait because, um, you know, there's no meaning in fighting right now. And he's basically deciding on who will be his first meal. Basically, it cuts back to Yard Drop with what Vegeta's doing. And it looks like Vegeta's doing, I guess, more spirit. And he failed it, the, failed it and he said he wants to do it one more time. And essentially, Py Pyrobara basically senses the energy coming off from Earth and stuff like that. And Vegeta basically says, yeah, the fights have not started long ago. And one of the other Yardranians basically asks Vegeta, like, yo, aren't you going to go over there now and help? And Vegeta's like, there's no point yet because Moro's not fighting yet. So essentially, he's going to try to cut it close like Goku did back in the start of the Android Saga when Frieza landed down. Um... He's going to try to show up with, like, seconds remaining now. I think what they're going to do is Pyrobara is probably going to instant transmission him over there to basically pick up the pace so he doesn't have to take, like, a spaceship or something. Um, you know, unless a Galactic Patrolman member is still there with Vegeta, um, unless they can get there fast enough, which... But I think at the end of the day, I think they'll get in the ship, 
and essentially he'll just the pirate bar will instant transmission them over there to earth so they can be there to assist and stop moro and then basically um vegeta goes on to basically try to do it do the um you know his spirit technique or whatever meanwhile at the end of the chapter literally the last panel of the chapter it cuts to goku on some planet with squid people and basically he asked them which way is earth because now he's um he's flying back to earth to go prepare for the fight to help out against moral also i forgot to mention jocko does say he does he also he does say earlier before the even you know moro and his crony show up he does say he did notify goku that um today is the day that they're going to be going back but he knows he doesn't know where vegeta's at so you know stuff like that um but other than that that's it so then like i said goku asking where earth is is the last panel of the manga and that's really it essentially essentially and that's it so you know i feel like goku and vegeta will probably pop up maybe not maybe the end maybe moro will start fighting by the end of next week's manga and then goku and vegeta will show up at the end of the following manga which i believe would probably be in march um because the next chapter of the dragon ball super manga um won't hit till february 20th um so yeah another huge long time so you gotta wait because today's the 20th so yeah you gotta wait um essentially a whole month again on the same day so you know next next month on the 20th that's when we get chapter 58 i believe yeah no 57 um so yeah that's when we'll get the next um chapter so that's really it um it was a good chapter um i liked it seeing the other earthlings get to fight get to fight as well as seeing you know piccolo and gohan do more team up moves because they've been doing that as of late since the, since the tournament of power really and you know the combination between piccolo and gohan is like literally one of the best but yeah that's really all i gotta say um another good chapter um can't wait for the next chapter to see where this goes obviously you know, Android 17 and 18 are going to probably wrap up the 7 and 3 fight. And, you know, the others will wrap up their fights respectively. And they'll probably all come back to the one main point and then Moro will come down because he's like, okay, I'm sick and tired of this stuff. You guys are getting dominated. Um, and then that's when he'll start his fight the next chapter. Um, but he'll probably appear, like I said, the last, the, the last panel, the last few panels of no, next month's chapter, and then in Mar in the March chapter, that's when we'll fight the Z Z Z fighters, and then by the end of that next chapter, that's when I believe Goku and Vegeta will finally show up because you know they both they all like to cut it close at the end of the time. But anyways, um, that's really it. So I'm gonna get out of here. Um, like I said earlier, keep your guys eyes peeled for my reviews of Supergirl episode ten. Um, as well as my My Hero Academia chapter, I believe 257 review. Um, I will be posting that today um, because I want because you know I should I'm going to and then I should. But anyways, if you if you like this video, leave a like. Um, if you want to hit the subscribe button for more Dragon Ball content, just Dragon Ball content as a whole, whether it's top tens, you know, you know, more chapter reviews, or you know, if whenever the anime decides to make its return. You know, expect reviews of that too. Um, so yeah, um, and then and then also hit, put in the comment section what you thought of this chapter. And also, I guess another quick question, um, you know, I guess question of the day: If you do have Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, um, tell me how you like it. Um, do you like it? Do you not like it? Um, is it what you expected um, the game would be? Um, other than that, that's really it. So I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to catch you guys later day or next time on the next video um, on this channel. Other than that, I'm going to get out of here. It's Camera 15, and I'm going to be signing out. Hopefully you guys have a great day. Peace.